Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have a third set of example problems all dealing with Newton's second law, F equals ma. And by now we should see a commonality between these four and the ones that we saw in the previous two videos. The methodology of solving for the acceleration of any one of these systems is always about the same. Actually, it's exactly the same. And so here what I have is outlined the steps that we must take to go through each one of these types of problems. First, you want to draw a sketch of the problem. There's a sketch. Secondly, you want to draw all the forces. So you can see that there's a force of gravity acting on this one. There's a force of gravity acting on this one. And then you must take each of the forces and divide them into the components that are perpendicular and parallel to the incline. So any forces associated with the incline either must be perpendicular or parallel. So you take a force that is not perpendicular or parallel, like the, the force due to gravity, and you subdivide it into its two components. Then you not, must determine the direction of the acceleration. Sometimes you have to guess. So you guess the direction. So you can see that in each case, we assume that the direction will be clockwise. Now, once you've determined the direction of the acceleration, and you may say, well, what if I was wrong? What if it's the other way? Well, if you're wrong, you probably end up with a negative answer, which means, oh, I should have taken it in the other direction. So then you do it again, reverse the direction of the acceleration, and then restart solving the problem. After you do that, you need to identify all the forces that are aiding the acceleration, which means all the forces that point in the same direction. For example, this force points in the same direction as, as the acceleration, and so therefore this is an aiding force. And then you must identify all the opposing forces. For example, this force right here is pointing in the opposite direction of the acceleration. That's an opposing force. So is the friction force here that's drawn in green. Then you write F equals ma or F net equals the total mass times acceleration. Solve that for the acceleration, and then you realize that the net force is simply the difference between the aiding forces and the opposing forces. You take the difference between those two, divide by the total mass, and that will give you the acceleration. And that's the method you use for each one of these examples. So let's go through the examples. On our first one, notice that there's no friction between the block here, M1, and the surface. You still have the, the weight, mg, divided into its parallel and vertical components. You determine the acceleration. Then you realize that this force is the aiding force. That force is the opposing force. So therefore, the acceleration is equal to the aiding force, m2g, minus the oppo opposing force, m1g sine theta, divided by the total mass of the system. Now, if there's friction, then you realize that this force, this component of the weight, pushing the block against the incline will have an opposing force. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So essentially, that's like a reactionary force. It's called a normal force. And it's also equal to m1g cosine theta. So this is the same magnitude, just opposite in direction. And then we have the friction force, because there's friction now. Mu is not zero. And therefore, the friction force, by definition, is the normal force. And this should be n1, not n2. n1 times mu. And n1, of course, is m1g cosine theta. So therefore, when you then write all the aiding forces, minus all, all the opposing forces, you have the aiding force, m2g, which is in the same direction as acceleration, and then you have the two opposing forces, m1g sine theta and m1g cosine theta mu. Those are the two forces pointing in the opposite direction. And so the difference between those two divided by the total mass gives you the acceleration of the system. What if you have a system like this where you have two masses on two inclines? First, we take the example where there's no friction. Notice you have the two forces of gravity. You subdivide them into the parallel and perpendicular components to the incline here and here. Notice we call this angle theta. We call this angle phi. And then you say, OK, what are all the aiding forces? Again, let's assume that the acceleration is in this direction because this block is bigger than this one. So you assume that it's going to accelerate in that direction. And then you say, well, that means that this is an aiding force m2g sine, sine phi, and this is the opposing force, m1g sine theta, because this is pointing in the opposite direction from acceleration. So therefore, the difference between the aiding force and the opposing force is m2g sine phi minus m1g sine theta, and divided by the total mass gives you the acceleration of the system. But then if you have the similar kind of problem, but now there's friction, then notice you have two friction forces. Now both friction forces will act in the opposite direction of the motion. They'll try to oppose the motion. So not only do you have the aiding force, m2g sine phi, right here, 
and the opposing force, M1g sine theta. You also have the two friction forces, which is the normal force times mu, the normal force times mu, and the normal force here is going to be M1g cosine theta, and here it's going to be M2g cosine phi, and then notice the only aiding force is M2g sine theta, or sine phi, that's this force right here. And then you have three opposing forces, the M1g sine theta, which is the same as what you have over there, but you also have the two friction forces, and divide that by the total mass of the system. And that will then give you the acceleration of the system. So again, it's the same approach regardless of what the problem looks like. And these four examples, along with the ones that we saw before, all will be worked the same way, the same concept, it's the net force, the difference between the aiding force and the opposing force, divided by the total mass to get the acceleration. You may say, well then, how do I calculate the tension on the string? Well, we'll show you some summary videos on that uh, coming after uh, these examples here. Again, remember that these are the methodology, this is the methodology that you want to follow to sol solve these kinds of problems, essentially the F equals MA types of problems for an entire system. And that is how it's done. Tripping on my wire here.